Normally I like to uh, I like to talk down here. I've always been a little uncomfortable being up lofty kind of like this. Um, and Dane asked me if, um, if I'm going to move around, like go over here or go over there, and I told him, basically said no promises. And I said, well, if I get real excited, I, I can't control that. You know, you, I might be, end up over here. I might, you never know. Um, thank Daryl for singing my favorite Christmas song, which is Silent Night. Um, it played one time, I heard it over the Walmart radio, because we have Walmart radio now. And uh, I heard it come on one time. I said, all right, my favorite favorite hymn, and, and whoever sang it completely destroyed it. And I just went, oh. She was screaming, silent night. Silent night, silent. I'm going, silent. You know, you ever think about the word silent? <laughs> but obviously not. Now, you're probably expecting... Uh, I thought about it. I thought about doing, you know, talk about Christmas, and I thought about talking about the birth of Christ, and, and so on and so forth. But we're not going to do that. Maybe a little. I want to talk about, and just kind of throw out a question, and you, of course you don't have to answer, but this is kind of a rhetorical question. What is it that you fear? What is it that you fear? Some people fear snakes. Some people fear spiders. My wife's smiling because she's thinking about what it is she fears. Um, of course, if you watch an episode of Home Improvement, they were talking about that one time because Tim was, you know, very afraid of snakes. And he asked Wilson, he said, Wilson, what is it you fear? And Wilson says, I do have one underlying fear. That life as I know it is somebody else's dream and the dreamer's going to wake up and I will no longer exist. It's kind of strange. Some people have a fear of heights. That's me. Sometimes if I get up too fast in the morning, I'm, I'm already too high. So I have a fear of heights. I cannot stand to see somebody on a ledge on TV. I have to turn my head because it just freaks me out. Get away from the ledge. What are you doing that close? So heights is just something that bothered me. When I was a kid, I used to climb to the very top of the tree. Didn't bother me at all. As I got older, I have no idea what happened. I can't climb the lower branch anymore. Some people perhaps even fear death. <coughs> you know, there's been a lot of talk lately about what's going on in the world. And as we read this morning about the nation Israel and about Manasseh, the king of Israel, and how his father Hezekiah, Hezekiah was a man who followed God did all kinds of right things in the, in the eyes of God. But Manasseh, his son, did evil. He set up idols. He did all kinds of things. He, he went to mediums. He did divination. He did all those things in which is evil in the sight of the Lord. And we kind of reflected about how that we think about our nation in the same way. We think about the world in the same way and where the world is at. We see all kinds of groups out there, and I'm not going to name what their names are. But there's all kinds of groups out there. That they just want to kill. They want to maim. They want to destroy. They want to blow up things. And you sit there and you wonder, why? Why do you want to do that? Is that something that we fear? Is that something that you think about and just kind of go, I don't want anywhere near me? Perhaps. Why would you want that near you, right? Why in the world would you want that near you? But you know what? It is. Unfortunately, it is. We were talking at work about, um, we, just, we had a meeting, and we've been having special meetings at work about what well, they call the cold brown. I work at Walmart, by the way. Um, Daryl mentioned the W word a couple times, and I kind of overlooked it, but I'm mentioning it again. And we had a, a meeting about code browns, which is basically an armed person coming in demanding money. And we've been told over and over again, don't think it won't happen to us. Because it has happened to Watertown. It has happened to a store in Pennsylvania. It is happening all over the country, where people are walking into stores or whatever, with a pistol, whatever, and demanding money. And we're told, 
do this and just go, take what you want. That's what we're told to do. Don't try to take the gun away. Don't try to do, be a hero because the money's not that important. So I wonder, do we fear that? Is that something that we fear? Is that something that is going on in the world today that we think about and dwell on and just get scared about? You know, there's a couple of instances in the Bible. You know, you, we don't often think about fear in connection with the apostles, right? They didn't fear anything. Not a thing. Wrong. Yes, they did. If you look in Galatians chapter 2, You know, let's look at verse 9 for a moment. This is Paul talking. And he says in verse 9 in chapter 2, In recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James and Cephas, Cephas is Peter, and John, who are reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. Reputed to be pillars. In other words, reputed to be, well, what does a pillar do? It holds up part of the house, Right? A pillar holds up, back in that day, pillars held up the whole structure. The pillars were so important because they held up the roof. So these guys, James, Cephas, and John, were reported to be, reputed to be pillars. Let's swing over to verse 11. But when Cephas, Peter, came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. This is an apostle we're talking about here. He stood condemned. Why? For prior to the coming of certain men from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof. So you see Peter is sitting with the Gentiles, having meals and whatever, used to eat with them. But certain men came to the area. So he hold, held himself aloof, fearing the party of the circumcision. He was afraid. He was afraid. This is an apostle. This is Peter we're talking about here. He was afraid. The rest of the Jews joined him. So when you got one person, such as Manassas, in a, in a great big country, saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to set up these idols and everything else, guess who joined him? The rest of the nation decided they were going to join with him and do what was evil. Peter decided he was going to fear the party of the circumcision, which was a party of Jews going around saying, you have to be, back, or have to be circumcised in order to be part of God's kingdom. When they came around, Peter said, I'm withdrawing from the Gentiles because the Gentiles, of course, we know are uncircumcised. In fear of that circumcision party, he held himself aloof. And guess who joined them? Every one of the other Jews. With the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. <laughs> but when I saw they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas, in the presence of all, you being a Jew, live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews. How is it that you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? Peter stood condemned. Why? Because he feared he feared. We see also with Peter, when those people came up to him and said, wait a minute, I know you. Weren't you one of Jesus' followers? I don't know the man. But I saw you. You were with him. I'm telling you, I don't know him. Yeah, someone else says, I remember seeing him too. You are one of his followers. Man, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know the man. And of course, we know what happens after that. That's right. That's right. And Peter remembers the words of the Lord. But it was out of fear. He said, I don't know him. 
He feared. So we have to ask ourselves, how, how much do we fear? Do we fear what is going on in the world today? Is, does it bother us? It should, right, to some extent? Shouldn't it bother us to some extent? Of course it should. We're not doing questions right now, Debbie. We're not doing questions right now. What did you have to say? Uh, it was way back when. It was a long time ago. Um, circumcision was brought about. God ordained circumcision that have eight days that a baby was circumcised. This was a mark that was done. This was something that was done because you were basically dedicating that little baby to the Lord. So that's why they were circumcised. Okay? Yep. Um, Moses. What did Moses say when God said, I'm going to, you're going to go into the land of Egypt and you're going to confront Pharaoh and you're going to say, let my people go? What was his reaction? Oh, no. You know, it's kind of like that little vulture on Looney Tunes. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Who am I to go before Pharaoh? I, I, I can't speak very well. So you're going to have to find somebody else. No. You are the one I have chosen. You're going to go before Pharaoh, and you're going to tell him to let my people go. But partly out of fear, Moses did not want to do it. It was not something that he was looking forward to or even trying because of his fear. I want to read some from John chapter 7. Start with verse 10. <clears throat> Where Jesus secretly goes to a feast. But when his brothers had <coughs> gone up to the feast, then he himself also went up, not publicly, but as if in secret. So the Jews were seeking him at the feast and were saying, Where is he? There was much grumbling among the crowds concerning him. Some were saying, he is a good man. Others were saying, no, on the contrary, he leads the people astray. <coughs> so you, you see, you hear the grumbling, right? There's grumbling going on, but it's not very loud. Because you don't want to be overheard seeing this position, and you don't want to be overheard seeing this position. Because it says in verse 13, yet no one was speaking openly of him for fear of the Jews. No one spoke openly of him because they feared the Jews and what was going to happen to them. So let's keep it down a little bit. Okay? You know, sometimes, and this is no stretch, I find myself doing that in the workplace. When I want to talk about the Lord, I keep it down. Because, you see, I don't want to be overheard too loud. It's something I've gotten over, but in the past, yes. I don't want to be overheard saying, this is my position and this is what I believe. Now, I hope somebody hears me. But there was a time when I did not want to speak aloud. I did not want, did not want my voice to carry to anyone else around me, but to the one I was talking to. That's sad because I, I should want and desire for that word to get out there and not fear anything, right? I shouldn't fear what anyone else thinks of me or what any else, anyone else is going to do to me because I speak what is true. But with all that said, there is good news. Yes, there is good news. And I was hoping I wasn't just bumming everybody out here because there is good news. Romans chapter 8. 
And I really want you to, to uh, really pay attention to the words of these scriptures. We'll read verse 28 and then skip down to verse 31. <coughs> and we know <coughs> that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Down to verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress, persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, just that it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered to be a sheep to be slaughtered. But in all things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. You ever think of yourself as a conqueror? I think, I think we think of we think of a conqueror. Who do we think of? Well, Genghis Khan, right? He was a conqueror. Um, who other? Who, who else is a conqueror? Napoleon, great conqueror, right? Went through all kinds of lands, conquered all kinds of armies. Do you think of yourself as a conqueror? Scripture says you are. But we are conquerors through who? Christ. Because he died for us and was raised. For I am convinced, in verse 38, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't think he left anything out. That is amazing. When you, there, there is so much power in those verses. I am convinced that all these things... There isn't anything in this world or beyond this world that could separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's nothing that can separate us. Nothing. And look at that list. Take the time sometime, just to open this scripture up and just look at it because it is so uplifting. And when we see the world around us and everything that is going on, all the the confusion and all the toil and all the stress and all the tribulation and these people that want to maim and murder and, and whatever they want to do. This scripture said there is nothing, nothing that can conquer you. There is nothing that it can separate you from the love of God through Christ. Nothing. Except this person right here. Acts chapter 21. You know, we've been, we've been going through the book of Acts in, uh, through on Wednesday nights. And it's not the first time we've read it through. But you know what's amazing about the book of Acts? When you read it through again, there, there's always things you, when you go through Scripture again, no matter how many times you read it, that you pick up on that you never thought about before. And I, I guess I never realized before, as many times as read through the book of Acts, how many times Paul got hurt. The guy was hurt all the time. He was beat all the time. Um, he was stoned, left for dead, possibly was dead. God picked him back up, said, go on, go on your merry way. Time and time again, almost every chapter you read about Paul being beat. Well, this section of scripture, it, it leads to another beating, by the way. But we're not going to go to that part. Start with the verse 10 in chapter 21 of Acts. As we were staying there for some days, a prophet named Agabus, and I always like that as we were staying, Luke is the writer of the book of Acts, and we is in Luke and the rest of our, of our group, you know? 
This is what we were doing. And I always, it just brings it home, doesn't it? It brings it more personalized to think about, this is, this is a group of people, and, and, and Luke is writing about it saying, this is what we did. A prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, and coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, this is what the Holy Spirit says. In this, in this way, the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. So he takes Paul's belt, binds himself up, and say, this is the way, this is what's going to happen to Paul. It's, it's what happens to Paul. <laughs> but the brethren that are around Paul, they're urging him, constantly urging him. If you back up to verse 4 in this same chapter, they're saying, don't set foot in Jerusalem. Don't go there because there's, there's too many people that want to kill you. You're going to die if you go there. But the amazing thing is that Paul's not afraid to go. In fact, he is eager to go. Verse 12. When he had heard this, we, as well as the local residents, began begging him not to go up to Jerusalem. Don't go because this is, this is a bad thing that's going to happen to you. You're going to be bound up. You're going to be put in jail. You're going to be beat. You're going to be, it's not looking good. So why go? Then Paul answered, what are you doing? Weeping and breaking my heart. For I am ready not only to be bound, but even to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we fell silent, remarking, the Lord's will be done. Paul was not shrinking back. He was not shrinking back because of what might happen to him. He said he was ready to be bound or to even die in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, I always introspect when I hear about things going on in the world, and I always introspect and ask myself that very same question. And I ask it a lot. And I look in the mirror and I go, are you ready not only to be bound, but to die at the hands of someone that does not like Christians? I hope so. But I believe we have to be ready all the time. Let's look at some words that Jesus said. Matthew chapter 10. Southern verse 16. And when we read this, let's let's take it very personally. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. You ever feel like a, a sheep in the midst of wolves? Yeah. Every day when I go to work. So be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. I'm not sure if I figured that one out yet. I'm not sure how to be shrewd as a serpent and innocent as a dove. Maybe, maybe you need to find a happy medium from somewhere on that one. Beware of men. For they will hand you over to the courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake. As a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about what you're going to say. For it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. For it is not you who will speak, but it is the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Brother will be betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. 
But whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign the members of his household? What did the Pharisees say that Jesus, where he got his power from? The devil. And that's what Jesus is saying here. They call the head of the house Beelzebul. They call me Beelzebul. How much more will they malign the members of his household? Us. Therefore, do not fear them. Do not fear them. For there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet one of them, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But the very hairs of your head are not all numbered. Do not, so do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. There is not a sparrow that falls to the ground that our Heavenly Father does not know about. And you're far more valuable than that. So don't fear. John 16, 33. Remember, you're a conqueror. And this is the reason why you are. John 16, 33. Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. But in the world, you have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. Does that give you peace? It should. It should. You know, this is something that has been on my mind for quite a long time because I hear people of faith saying, what's going on today is scary. And to some extent, that, that's kind of bothered me in a little bit because should we be scared? To some extent, it's alarming what is going on. It is alarming when we hear about, but you know, I, I, I saw a program the other night, the other day, um, it happened in the 1920s, 1920s. Um, I wasn't aware of it until I saw it. There was a bombing on Wall Street in New York City in the 1920s. And I went, it goes back that far? Well, actually, it goes back a lot farther than that. It goes since God created man. But it, it kind of woke me up to the fact that, you know, Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. We just hear about it a lot more, don't we? Because all this white communication. I mean, you can see something on TV at 10 minutes after it's happened. And literally, 10 minutes after it's happened, you'll be watching it on TV. And there's so much of it in our faces. There's so much of it that we hear about. There's so much that is going on that... But those things should not be surprising to us. Isn't it? And Peter says, do not be surprised at the fiery, fiery ordeal that you're going through. Because it's nothing new. As if some strange thing was happening to you. But you can be at peace because, you see, we're conquerors. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, he has overcome the world, and so have we. So have we. Let's go to our Lord in prayer.
Father in heaven, we thank you that you are our Lord and our God. The world asks and doesn't understand why it's the way it is. Why is there so much confusion and tribulation and mayhem? And the world uses an excuse not to believe you, not to believe in you, but to ignore you. But Father, help us to see with better eyes. Help us to see that we can have peace in the midst of turmoil. That we can have joy when there is sadness all around us. But Father, help us not to be desensitized to what is going on. But to earnestly care. But not to fear. And to love the people around us as you have loved us. As you have loved the whole world. Lord, let us be love to others. And we think of the world as a whole and we think we want to change it. And Lord God, you really are, all the, are the only one that is big enough to change the whole world. But we can change our part of it by being the people that we ought to be in your name. But let us do it with full confidence and peace. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dan, number 646, 646. It is well with my soul. 646. When he's like a river on dead. with my soul.